Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel at Art by Jalen. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick little speed draw or time lapse video of me making one of my post it note sketches. You've probably seen me do these on Instagram or Facebook, and today I'm going to do it of this guy. It's a little Pop Funko figure of the Superior Spider Man. And so I want to do this video because I feel like why not share how I do these uh, little post it note sketches that I do when I'm on cooldown from working on my book or if I'm warming up to do my book. So here we go. Okay, so the first part of this video is called the layout stage. And in this stage, basically what you're doing is just getting the uh, composition or the figure shape or the um, basically how you want to set up the character and the story that you're doing on the post-it note. So you'll see me here kind of just going about. I, I end up doing one pose and then I rethink and scrap it and do a different pose, which is all part of the layout process. Laying out is setting the foundation of whatever the piece of art that you're doing is going to be. So sometimes I get kind of frustrated, but like then I have to try to remember this is just like a cool down thing. It's not you know, anything super finished, super clean. So just keep it loose in the layout stage. Keep it uh, fun. Keep the uh, energy of your lines as, as much as you can. And then just kind of go from there. Then once the basic layout stage of the, the piece is done, I go in and I start detailing the costume and I put in the um, kind of the indicators of where my light source will be whenever I start to go to the inking stage because what you, when I do this, for me at least, I like to pencil out my line weights. Um, sometimes I do uh, just leave it pretty rough and pretty unfinished, but when it comes to something kind of complicated like doing his, um, the web, the web, uh, tentacle thingies that Superior Spider-Man has. I really wanted to kind of get those in perspective, and I was thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me, I was really thinking about the composition of how I wanted to kind of use those to draw your eye into the, the, the picture or the character. So in this stage, you take a little bit more time, and honestly, whenever I do these, like I start really, really fast with the layouts and the composition, and then as I go, I just take more and more and more time. And I think if you, like, adopt that strategy, your drawings will be better for it. Um, eventually you'll get to a point where, and I'm assuming this as well, um, eventually you'll probably get to a point where everything gets faster. But for me, I kind of like to start fast, get everything that's in my head on the paper, and then from there the drawing is pretty easy and you're just basically relaxed and you can just do touch-up work and you can uh, just kind of get the fine, tight little details and the story out in, uh, in all your pieces. And that's the big thing too. Even with these post-it notes, I try to put some kind of story in there, um, some kind of um, indicator, something that relates to the character. So if you notice, his head position is kind of tilted, uh, tilted down when he's get when he has his web at coming at you, um, because uh, the Superior Spider-Man, if you don't know, is Doctor Octavius. He's trapped in Peter Parker's body, and then um, Peter Parker. Uh, dies in Dr. Octavius' body, so Dr. Octavius has to continue being Spider-Man. So because of that, he's a more villainous version of Spider-Man. So you kind of want to imply that in a pose, in this example at least, you kind of want to imply that with, with the pose, with the, the way that you can construct the uh, the image. So that's what I try to do here in this in this little post-it note, and I think I did a pretty okay job. Um, like I said, this is just like a, it's a cool-down thing or a warm-up thing, and I think if you guys start doing these kind of on a daily basis, there'll, there'll be a level and a, a jump to your art. Like, I've seen it in mine already, even when I'm going back and I'm doing my actual, like, paid work that I have to do for this book. Um, I see a lot of things that are, they used to be really, really difficult, and now they're, like, kind of super easy. 
So now here I'm getting into the inking stage of the piece and I'm using the Pigma Micron uh, fine line markers and I love those markers because they, I don't know, I think it's just the line quality and the, the, the color of the ink because um, it's India ink inside of the pens. So you get to do a lot of things dynamically. I, use, I switch between the 01, the 03, and the 08. I'll probably put those in text on the, uh, on the screen here. And then I also uh, kind of flip back and forth, and I, I do use Sharpies. A lot of artists say don't use Sharpies because they're not archival, and I get that. But when you're doing little sketches like these, um, you, you might as well just use them because they can take up a lot of black area uh, on, on, the, on the composition and stuff. So, And uh, this was fun because I don't really draw characters that have a lot of black in their costumes very often. I like to draw like kind of fun characters that have uh, been drawn with open line work or not as much um, cross-hatching kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so I, I just really enjoyed uh, getting able to do that on this particular piece. But yeah, so you'll see me kind of indicating uh, my line weights again. So I know I'm kind of having this top down um, light source. So if you'll notice, I try to make all the like the stuff on his chin, I'll make those lines a little bit bigger um, with like a 0.3 or a 0.1. And I'll just kind of like build on top. It's easier to, to use a 0.3 or a 0.1 and make it thicker than to just go straight in with a, a 0.8 and then have to try to fine line it for me. Some people work the other way. Some people can just like grab the 0 0.8 and make it a thin line and then kind of get there. But I like to just kind of make sure that I know that it's as exactly as thick as I want it. So it's it's kind of up to you. It just takes practice. So don't think nothing of it, just have fun. And as far as inking goes, I know there's a lot of fear that when you make these great pencils and you try to ink your own work that you're gonna ruin it. You just kind of gotta get over it and get after it. You know, I used to be that way, I think, probably like a year and a half ago, but I just, I started committing to it more and I started not to fear it as much. And I approached it the same way I started doing my pencils. So if you do that, I think your art will end up being better. <laughs> And then last but certainly not least, I hit it with some Copic color. I use the, uh, the the reds here, I use a black, I use some of the cool grays, and then I also end up making a background. And what I use for the background is this uh, like pent, like a pent or jelly roll white gel pen uh, to do the outline at the very, very end. You'll see at the end of the video. Um, and it kind of just makes, whenever you're doing these post-it notes, if you use that, it kind of just makes it pop off the page more. Um, Todd Knock, thank you. <coughs> um, so I really like doing that on these pieces, and it just, I don't know, it's really fun to just kind of make these lines and have fun. As far as webbing goes, I, you know, you can make them the traditional way, which is you link all of them, they kind of go in a circle, or you can kind of go like more, I don't know, if you go more realistic webbing, if you notice that when spiders make webs, the lines don't always add up. So I kind of think that's more um, artistically interesting to look at. So that's what I did there at the very, very end. So. Uh, the rest of this video is just going to be time-lapse. I'll drop some music and uh, enjoy.